Hi, hello everyone. Welcome back. We have a new challenge here against Mr. Smith Chess. Let's play Spanish today. Knight f6. The notorious Berlin defense. Okay. Let's play castle. Okay, d6 is a passive move. It's definitely not as strong as knight xe4. And the very principled choice will now be to open up the center of the board because black is developing uh, kind of slowly. Pawn takes d4. Okay. I can just take back on d4, which is the most obvious move. Also, whoops, also e5 makes some sense once again in order to to open up the center and try to attack his king on the e file. Looks tempting. The problem is that black will very quickly at some point play e5, takes, takes, bishop d no, sorry, bishop d7 and then bishop e7. Probably I will not be in time to catch his king, so I'll just play knight xd4. Okay, so bishop d7, I will now take on c6 and play this queen f3 move. This is a very typical strategy here. This queen is enabling me to play some knight f5 at some point, or maybe even e5 can be unpleasant. For example, right now I'm wondering whether e5 makes sense. Pawn takes e5, knight takes e6. I'm hitting his queen. Looks quite good actually. And if he plays this intermediate move e4, I also have an intermediate move. I mean, not intermediate move, but just a defensive queen c3 move. Hmm. Definitely interesting. Let's try it. Let's go e5. This guy is playing on extremely high speed, so um, showing a lot of confidence, but um, I'm not really sure he played uh, the most exact moves. Now he needs to to solve some issues. Okay, so knight e5 he played. If this is if this is the best uh, that black has, the, the movie 5 is for sure uh, justified. Okay, let's take on d6. Once again, to have this open file for my rook. And we must remember that black didn't castle yet. Now I really want to drive away this strong knight from the center. Let's play c4. So now if the knight drops on some square like this, I will always have knight takes e6. So perhaps the only way to try to do something was knight b4, but he didn't do it. I think the move knight b6 actually makes the job very easy for me. I will just take on c6 right now. Yeah, so I will just... Seems like we are just going to have a pawn up endgame for me should be quite pleasant. I have actually, this is not as easy as I thought because I don't have this b3 move. You will have bishop f6. This is a bit unfortunate. This means that I'll have to play a slightly more passive move right now in order to protect my extra pawn. So knight d2 or knight a3. Hmm. Yeah, he does have some compensation some compensation, some some development uh, some development advantage, so I'm wondering maybe I exchanged queens a bit too <laughs> too quickly, maybe she have preferred queen f3, but anyways that's even a bit of an awkward choice knight e2 blocks the bishop knight a3 puts the knight on the clumsy square I would go with knight d2. Um, 
at least from d2, if he ever plays bishop f6, I have this way to chase away his bishop with knight e4. But I must admit that black does have some compensation here. White is a bit underdeveloped. His rooks can get into the game uh, very quickly, maybe on e8. He has a lot of open files. So I think the next moves are going to be very critical to the evaluation of the position. The, the biggest question will be whether uh, me whether whether white would be able to consolidate his advantage and avoid um, a kind of and not allow black any activity um, or it might be black who will be able to pose some serious uh, troubles to my development so yeah bishop f6 I'm forced to play rook b1 d5 this is a very sensible move he wants to open up the center because he is better developed this is something i tried to do earlier when i was better developed <laughs> things kind of changed since then but we we must remember that his king is is also in the center of the board so whenever the d file gets opened i'll have some opportunities to attack his king so it's not exactly um it's not so simple for sure So should I just take on d5 or should I play rook d1? I feel like this is, these are my options. Let's take on d5. I'll kind of keep my rook flexible. And now I have this knight e4 move. So it's important to control the square on c3. Rook c2, fine. So at the very least I can take on f6 at any point and then play a move like bishop b2 for example. I'm wondering if I should insert the move rook d1, whether whether this move will be useful. Let's go rook d1. I'm, I'm kind of curious about where exactly his king will go. King e6, okay. Now I can harass him a bit with the move rook e1. Or I can go for the simplistic knight x f6. Let's do it. So, black is now facing a bit of a question of how to recapture. So his move knight c3, well, is it sound though? So at the moment I'm, a, I'm having an extra bishop, right? But he's attacking two of my rooks, well. Okay, so let's play rookie one check. And against king takes f6, I'll have bishop b2. Or even, wait, rook b2 is very strong actually. Because now he is forced to take on b2, I'll take with the bishop. And he'll have serious problems with the spin. Oh, he has 92 check maybe? Oh, well, this is complicated. I'm really not sure about what's going on, but let's go for the safe option of bishop b2. Black is kind of doing a good job of making my life uh, tougher. So now I have to take it. So I'm having a pawn up, but Black still has some very annoying activity, I must say. His rooks will probably get to to the second rank. Maybe I should start with rook e7 and kind of try to get active myself. Yeah, so let's try to get active. That's the only way in chess, you know. Be active, be aggressive. You will probably play rook c8. 
Well, rook a8 to play. This is a very passive move. I actually don't like it at all. So at some point I'll have to play a luft for my king. Perhaps I should do it right now. Let's play g3. a5. Okay, now I have to activate my rook from d1. Let's play rook d1. So I want to get to d6 or d7, depends on his move. He's playing extremely quickly. I'm wondering why, because yeah, his, his moves are not so obvious to, to my eyes. So now his pawn on f7 is under attack. Yes, rook f8 is forced. Now I want to pursue this pawn on on a7. So on a5, sorry. So rook a7 makes a lot of sense. Let's go for it. He will probably try to go for my pawn on a2. Yeah, but now I have this very easy solution just to play a4. And if he's trying to go for the other pawn, I just play rook b7. So you, you see that his rook on f7 is now completely tied down to the defense of the f7 pawn. So he has uh, no chance to get any activity. And I think I will go I'm going to collect the pawn on a5 uh, kind of at my leisure. So what is, actually I can take the pawn on a5, but I, I can also actually just wait, because I, I really don't see his next move. I, I'm curious, let's just play king g2, a useful move, getting my king slightly closer to the center. You might see that black is running out of moves, he cannot move his rook, and he cannot move his f pawn. Okay, rook c2 he played. Which is a move I'm happy to see, because it means that my b3 pawn is under under no pressure. Let's um, let's see. In, at the moment I'm taking on a5, I'm taking pressure off the f7 pawn, so it means that he will be able to play rook d8, rook d2, and at least uh, get some activity, which I don't want to allow. Hmm. Interesting. I still don't see his next move though. I will try to cage his king. Let's play g4. My idea is to go for some checkmating net. So king g3, maybe h4, h5. I'm allowing myself to do so just because black is so passive. Rook c5. Okay, so he's just protecting the pawn, but once again, this is a very passive move to my eyes. Let's play king g3. The issue that he cannot get any activity with this rook on f8. I think this is this is what um, this is like the biggest issue with his position. H5, okay. Let's play H3. So I have a sort of a plan. So I want to provoke at some point the move f6 by him. And then try to go for some checkmating attack. His king is very short of squares. Okay, now, so check. You will have to play probably f6. Right? Or maybe, maybe he doesn't have to play f6. I want to check th the surface, kind of. Let's play check. So King h7, yeah, this is maybe a more solid move. Let's keep pushing. So f4, he has this check on c3, but I can always hide on h4. It's not a big, big worry for me g6 now I can go even further with king g5 yeah let's do this 
you see that I'm in, I'm in no rush to take this pawn on a5. I'm just playing for activity. I think now he blundered this pawn, which I think I will take. That's a check. Okay, now I have two pawns up and I'm still keeping my tempo, which is very important. But my pawn on b3 is under attack. Can I create checkmating threats? I'm thinking about luring him into some small trap, maybe to play f5. Let him take on b3. And then... Um, then to play f6 and play rook g7. Let's go with this. Obviously I could just defend my pawn on b3, but... I think now these pawns are much more important. He almost used no time in this game. Actually, I think this is uh, this is uh, going to be um, very bad for him. Yeah. So now my idea was f6, and the thing is, he doesn't have any checks. On the um, on the fifth rank, before before that his rook was on c3, so actually the move rook c5 check would win at this point. But now, yeah, but he 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 made he made this move one one move later, and I'm thinking now he's going to lose because um, I was going to collect the other pawn and two pawns very easily will very easily outplay. Um, um, very uh, easily outplay this one pawn. So, is it matter which, with, with which rook I'm taking? I, I, I only need to be careful about stalemates. This is, uh, this is something uh, important to keep in mind. Stalemate is still an option. Let's take with this rook. So the king is in a stalemate position, but the problem is, is he, he needs to get rook. He needs to get rid of both of his rooks, and I really don't see how he can do it. Yeah, now the king has a square to go to. Yeah, so there are uh, basically no more uh, stalemate issues. Yeah, this is a very easily won position. I will just advance uh, my pawns. He will collect one pawn. It's really it's really not important so now I'm threatening checkmate yeah I think he should resign so um, at this point I will mention that I think the most important factor in this game was not to allow any sort of counterplay and not necessarily uh, not necessarily winning uh, like taking the most material or winning the fastest just um, just winning the most kind of without giving your opponent any chances so for example I'm wondering uh, what the engine will say mm. yeah so he played the opening I think very clumsy in a very clumsy way yeah it's already quite a significant advantage for white by move number 11 and this is just a, a pawn up endgame. So at first I was a bit worried about Black's uh, development advantage, but as you can see, the engine is just saying that it's a plus one position. Uh, because slowly White is kind of uh, regaining control, so there are no big issues. There was this one trap though, which, which was kind of funny. So I, I, at first I thought that Rook B2 is winning, Okay, I was afraid of knight e2 at this point. Uh, okay, engine just says king f1, very cold-blooded, but engine even finds a stronger move, rook e8. I always have those back rank problems, this is why it's not so easy. But b bishop b2 is good enough. And this is just a pawn up endgame, which still requires some technique in order to win. 
Uh, I think I did fairly well. He played very passively, rook a8. I think he must have tried to play for an active play like the engine suggests here. Maybe rook d8, try to get two rooks on the second rank. This would be definitely a better strategy. Rook a8 is terribly passive. And um, yeah, I think once my rook, I, I got those two rooks on the seventh rank, I, th I think from this point onwards, Black is already uh, completely losing. So, hope you enjoyed this game. See you guys next time. Bye-bye.